Kirby, how's it going? It's going good. Right now, right now, all I'm doing is I, I let out a clay uh, dry for a couple hours, and so I'm setting it in my wet box right now as I'm kind of waiting to get uh, ready to start the stream here. There we go. If you can see all the, the blocks here. Some of it's still a little bit soft, I would say, for my preference. But the show goes on. Green on. Ooh. Good morning, chili dogs. What you focus on grows. Feed them horses. Three more pots coming your guys' way. We got this one right here. And then I, the playlist today is called like. Um, funky bops from Nintendo or something like that. So this video is probably gonna be copyrighted. That's okay. <laughs> I'll see you guys over in a second. Let's wheel. Did it not work? Let's wheel. It's really not working. All right. Well, anyway, green off. Goated one. Howling at the sky. Me, what's the hardest thing to do in pottery? Um, maybe just like failing, right? Like when you fail over and over again, like the more and more time you spend with an object, it's that disappointment when something doesn't come out that's really mentally taxing. <sighs> Took this over. The clay saw. And so it's actually going to want to listen to us a lot more than what it has the other days here. A bit of water. A little bit of an air bubble on that bottom, but don't freak out. Keep your hand right underneath. Get ready for a transition. Bring this back up. Down. A bit of water. Up. And camera C, bring your fist right down on top. All right, here we go. Thumbs right down this middle. Check for any rabbits, no rabbits. All right, a little bit of water on the inside. Slowly fill up that pond and then grab your captain hook, cut it right across that bottom. And I'm just using one finger to really cut across that bottom base there. Do I feel like Patrick Swayze? Not really. We're gonna grab our llama here. Llama's gonna come down. He's gonna bite right on that rim. We're gonna swap over to camera B. And the thing with llama is that llama loves volcanoes. So you make your volcano, you grab your knuckle, Push right in at this bottom edge here. A 
There we go. First pole. These first poles are all really about getting those walls, e those wall thickness equalized. Right down to the bottom edge here. Slow the wheel down. Right up to the top. Maintain that bump. Slowly lessen that bump as you get to the top rim because it's a little bit thinner. Finish off that pole. All right. Like, when do you know to add water? Hmm. I know when to add water because I've gotten so good at feeling what the clay is telling me, right? As you're touching the clay, you're having a conversation, right? And so for me, how do you know when your friend is feeling sad in a conversation? Is it their facial expressions? Do they tell you? You know, it's that same exact way. And so how do I know how to use water? Because the clay's telling me to. Again, right down to the bottom, fully pop this up. And again, slightly reduce that pressure as we get to the top. I'm going a little bit slow on these poles now too, but that's just because the clay is so soft, right? Here we go. Grab your water, slowly, pull those walls and up just a little bit. Kiss that rim. And so watch that just spin right up, right? Keep my eye on it because the twist looks like it's wanting to be to one side, right? And so you can see, whenever those little, where I end off, they're not perfectly level, so they, that's gonna make it tilt one side more than the other. But as long as you have the twist, you got it. Why do we gotta be swirling like that? Because I'm not here trying to make, I'm not here trying to make pots that have been made for thousands and thousands of years. I'm trying to make my own, my own genre of pots. Cut, 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 cut. The key with these tandrels, I'm going to touch them as little as possible. Kind of looks like a Beyblade on the bottom of the pot here. I feel like I'm in a loading screen for a Nintendo gaming system. Or <laughs> like in a Sonic game. Pop these out. Alright. Camera C. We're going to set number one over here. And we're going to cut out here too. Goated one. Camera B. Can you make a triangle shaped pot? Um, do you ever fire them? Or is there an end goal more than just fill the room? Uh, the end goal, the whole point of all this is so I can callous my brain, right? Like I actually, when I first started pottery, I didn't even like pottery. Um, it was just something I told myself that I had to do because I gave up again on another art endeavor. And so I said, all right, no more giving up, right? So every day that I continue to throw is building up that mental callus in my brain that whenever something, adversities come my way that I can just power on through. What number am I on for the trees? The trees, I'm on number like 978 or something like that. <laughs> so I said, people after a thousand years are going to think that your place is some ancient civilization with so many pots. That'd be the goal one day, you know, that I just have so many. But here we go. Camera C. Put your thumbs on the interior here. Somebody said, what's my wizard name? 
Garank, the beast clergyman. <laughs> my tree, or my horses? Yeah, I just throw them right off the hump here, right? And what I'll do is after I throw them off the hump, I'll just bend their, their head over, right? Um, let's see if I can actually, this is one of them. This is a bad one though. I was making like a chess set, and so this is the horse. But it's just a pot, and you just bend its nose over, and then you get a, like a little squiggle from the bottom, and then you set that on to be the main. So I was doing a whole bunch of thrown, thrown chess with your llama pole here, right to the top, and make sure you got a nice volcano. Where is your dono button? You guys, you guys already are donating. You're donating your time. That's like the most valuable thing right now. For me, you know, like, one day maybe I'll make money off this stuff, you know? And maybe I'll have a donation button maybe in a year or two or something. But right now my whole goal is I just need to build up a, a following, you know? I want to have like an impact on ceramics, so really that's like you guys just spending time here, that's like, that's a great donation. Somebody said, could you fart in a pot? Uh, seal it and send it to me. Well, actually, you know, when the clay dries, the pot becomes a little bit porous, right? And so air actually seeks out of it, right? So it wouldn't really work. Do you do this all the time? Yeah, I do this. I do this every day, um, and I will be doing it every day until uh, August 10th. That's when my year is up. Alright. Camera B. It's being really still. Allow the wheel to do the work, guys. Nice job. I want a small floral company. I would love to order some. Do you have a shop or anything? Nope, I don't sell any of my pots. I just, like I said, they're all just for me. Maybe one day, but for right now. Why till August 10th? August 10th's the day that I started my journey on throwing these pots every day. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, six. Okay. Some water on our hands. Then what will I watch? That's so funny. I'll probably still be doing this, but that's, but just not every single day. Bump out that top, kiss that rim. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Curl this in. Curl this in. We're gonna do petals on the bottom here. Why pottery demon instead of pottery angel? <laughs> well, for me, the one of the reasons I told you that this is all for my mind, right? And so what I always say is like, when you wake up in the morning, what do you what do you hear first? You know. You hear this like little demon in your brain, right? And what does he do? He he whispers these these sweet nothings. He whispers comforts into your ears and says, you know, come back, you know, the, the bed is warm, you know, just relax. Like, you know, so comforts always dictate like what I did before, right? And so why pottery demon? Demon is the thing that I'm trying to reject. And by just having that as my name, it keeps it in my mind whenever I hear those comforts that I need to reject them and keep on going, right? And so that's why it's Pottery Demon. Camera C. All right, goaded one.
made the hardest pottery edit and thought we wouldn't notice. Yo, Whistle Bane, I got 134 <laughs> locked and loaded. Whenever you guys are ready, just let me know. Camera A. Right to the top. Tilt this over and push down. Keep that right hand stiff. Don't let it move around and slowly walk that down. A little bit of water. Bring this back up. Get ready. Camera C. And look where I'm keeping my hand here, guys. It's almost like I'm splitting up the clay into thirds, right? Boom, boom. One, two, three. I'm always keeping my hand on this left third, and my wrist is never pushing through the middle, right? I'm always pushing past center, and that's how I keep it on center. A little bit of water. Fill the pond. Hook your fingers. And imagine your clay is like a, a three-layered cake. As long as you cut through that bottom layer of that cake, these top two layers are gonna follow, right? I'm gonna grab our friend Mr. Llama here. Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Llama. We're gonna go in for another volcano pulse. Camera B. And slowly walk this up. Key is just slowly walk that clay up, guys, right? Until you get your volcano. Somebody said they recommend Crayola clay? Interesting. You must have random stains on your bed or something, or like around your house where it's not supposed to be. My whole entire house has pots in it, so there's literally just dust everywhere. Okay, we got a hard chunk of clay, so we just gotta get that out of there. You can see that little bump. Somebody says, when I pull cylinders, I always end up with a wobbly top. Any advice? All right, I'll show you here in one second. Let me collar this up, and I'll do the last pull with you guys. And so it might get a little bit wobbly here. You can already see the top is a little bit wobbly, right? But I'll show you how I go through a pull right down to the bottom. I get some water on my hand and get some water on my elbow, right? Have it right down the side there. I'm slowly, at that first bump, I take my finger on the outside, I'm pushing that in ever so slightly, and I meet that finger on the inside. Then I'm slowly taking that finger on the inside, drifting it up and above the finger on the outside until I have this little bump. And then that's what you're gonna be focusing on taking all the way up the side of the pot, right? Then you just lift both hands at the same time, and like a slug trying to get his next meal, you slowly walk this bump up. I think the biggest problem for a lot of potters is that what they're doing is they're squeezing the clay. When you're not squeezing the clay, you're stretching it out. So, that's how I finish off a pole there. All right, pretty thin on the top here, so I gotta be careful. Wait, I don't know if I'd put anything in the microwave, yo. What do you guys put in the microwave? Oh, you guys are still talking about <laughs> clay to eat? You guys are so funny. I feel like that's just gonna be going on for years now, ever since that one video. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, All right, you guys ready? A little bit of water on your hands. Bring this little bump here. Really, really thin on that top. You can, you guys can probably tell the way my fingers kind of kicked out there. We're gonna leave it just like that. Slowly push down. How do you side between seven or six on the tree trunk? I don't, I just totally go for it. Part of the reason why I make these trees too is I also think that there's something exciting that's happening at almost every stage, right? Where if I was to make like a bellied shape uh, pot, right? I'm gonna have to spend three or four minutes just bellying out that middle point, right? 
it's kind of boring to see that same thing, but for me, I like something a little bit more energized. No idea how I got it suggested, but I'm not complaining. Nice work. All right, and I think on this one, we're going to do a double tandrel on here, guys. So we're going to cut. And the key with a double tandrel is you want them to feel gestural, right? Once you break away from the pattern of multiple and you only got two, they start functioning like appendages. So you got to treat them as such, give them some looseness, give them a gesture, and have them do something. Maybe they're coming across. They're chilling out right on this top edge here. Okay, so there's number one. And then maybe we're going to take the second one and we're going to curl this up over. And we're going to have it right underneath this edge here as if he's holding up his head or something or looking out a window. So here you go, guys. This one looks tasty. Now take a big bite. <laughs> eat clay. Did you eat clay today? You eat clay. Your chat is obsessed with eating clay. That's okay. All of them, people who are saying that chat really want to take a bite out of some nice juicy clay, but they just don't know where to get it, right? And they're a little bit nervous. Edit time? Yeah, you guys want to see an edit? All right. Goated one. says these look like a, a dune bucket, you know, but no. <laughs> Another, please. All right, just chill out. Chill out one second. I'll do one in a, in a moment, okay? Just give me some time. All right, I got to prep. Charge your energy, guys. Everybody charge your energy. <sighs> Manifest it. Manifest it. Use your powers. Green on. And like you've done, you've manifested your energy so the pottery demon could manifest himself on the wheel, shrinking myself down next to the pots here. But anyway, we're going to start off with this one. I think this one probably turned out my favorite to the day. You know, I did a double tandra on this one. I'm using them almost as if it's resting its hands on its chin, looking out a window on a very rainy and sad day, right? But I do like the way that th the tandrils look when they become a double. They function as appendages, where on this one, you can see the tandrils are more of a pattern along the bottom, really trying to manifest that tree energy in this one over here, right? So even with these two pots, and all these pots, they're all doing the same uh, potential, right? The same rhythm or pattern, but I add so much potential and so many things start lapping over into the different parts of the process, so they all turn out a little bit differently, right? And so it's kind of a fun thing to explore potential with each pot. But anyway, we got the one on the top. This is a more basic one. I kind of do like these ones where the twist is lower instead of going really wide out. I was thin on all these tops because the clay was a little bit soft today, but I do like how they turned out. Thanks for watching. All the best and strong mentality.